Hello and welcome to the Sarasota Film Festival Spotlight Series. Today I'm here with... John Jeffcoat. I'm the writer-director of Big in Japan. Fantastic. Tell us all about Big in Japan. Big in Japan is a rock and roll road movie comedy about nice. some band, a uh, band named Tennis Pro from Seattle, who are kind of struggling and yeah. decide to go to Tokyo to try to break into the music industry. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. love this. So. Yep, gotta ask, where did this idea come from? What inspired this story? <laughs> uh, I met the band, I was introduced to the band basically, who were, it, it, it's largely based on reality in a sense. Yeah. It's not a documentary at all, it's a narrative comedy. Um, but they are a band who's been around four albums deep and they were wow. kind of not catching on in Seattle. Their, mu their brand of music, just for whatever reason, wasn't, you know, wasn't wasn't catching on so but they always felt like in Tokyo they'd get the music and so they were in this weird position where they thought oh, wow. maybe fun to do like a reality show where someone followed them I wasn't interested in that but I thought it could be fun to do sort of a rock and roll road movie and do it real small scale crew and go there and, and kind of go on tour with them and, and make a movie about this band's experience in Tokyo oh that's fantastic yeah. so um what happened, oh, there must have been things you didn't <laughs> expect that came up along the way. Tell us about well, some of the, the fun surprises. Yeah. I can't give away too much, but uh, but yeah, we did two different trips. The first trip was essentially a, a tour, going on tour with the band. We shot sure. all the live stuff, and we did a lot of improv. None of us had been to Tokyo before. So it was... And so you got to catch their genuine reactions yeah, well, to Yeah, and our there. general reaction. To, well, wow. the funny thing was, we what I wanted to do, uh, the experimental side of this project yeah. was essentially... Uh, the band's a trio, and I yeah. thought it would be fun to have the crew as a trio, too. So we have sort of a trio shooting a trio. So it was, our crew was three people. Wow. It was me. I was shooting. Uh, it was me and another cameraman. So we had two wow. cameras and a sound man. And the sound man actually did double duty as a character in the movie. And so when oh he was gosh. on screen, we actually had with the guitarist. Uh, operating the boom, uh, so it's a, it was. This is why you never see these two people in the same frame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So we um, uh, we we basically uh, you know it, it, and they are not actors. There's no sure. actors in the movie. So it was also imperative, I thought, to keep it really tight knit and small, kind of intimate, just to to, to make it really comfortable for them to expose themselves and be willing to you know get out of their comfort zone in many of the situations we were in. And uh, a lot of what happened on that first trip we was improvised or experiences we had that then the next day we might incorporate into the film. And one good example is, uh, you know, after a day of shooting, we went out to dinner and we just all had a bunch to drink. And the sound man started doing, or sound man Adam Powers, was started doing these um, accents and doing this character. <laughs> and he was cracking us up and we just thought, it was a great character that we could develop into like this kind of character who's these guy, this young guy who's been traveling all around the world, staying in youth hostels, and he's kind of lost his <laughs> accent. He's, crazy. he's got this bizarre international accent, and he's kind of looking for Nirvana, you know. And and so we thought, let's let's try a scene where he meets Phil from the band the next day. And so we just we brought, you know, that's when we put him on set, and we literally put the two together. I gave him some direction as far as where I wanted things to go, and we just let him improvise. And we were cracking up. I mean, Ryan and I were hand-holding the cameras, but it was so hard to not laugh. Oh my gosh. And so we developed this character of Mons, who, yeah. um, who after we did this improv and it worked out, we decided to expand this role and make it a bigger part of the movie. And he's turned out to be one of the pop most popular, one of my favorite moments in the movie with a lot of the audience. That is fantastic. Yeah. So. To sum up, what do you hope our audiences take from Big in Japan? Because I'll tell you, if, if they laugh <laughs> half as much as we've been laughing just watching you, I mean, how could you resist this yeah. movie? Go see it. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's, it's, a, it's a fun movie. It's a, it's a really, it's a great movie. If you've been seeing a lot of downers and you're kind of feeling like you don't want to see a dreary art house movie, come see Big in Japan. It's a fun movie about guys chasing their dreams and uh -huh. what they're willing to do to, to get there. And it's a great introduction to Japan. You're probably going to want sushi after you watch this movie. Nice. Yeah. And there we go. Thanks so much for your time, buddy. Thank, thank you. Thank